The stress on a body is not always the same throughout time. As we move around, our organs and tissues will experience changing stresses. As a result, being able to understand and quantify these stress changes becomes important. An assumption important in this analysis is that these stresses will stay in equilibrium as they change in the case of a homogeneous stress field with no body forces. Imagine a small elemental cube in a 3D space. The volume of this cube will be defined by differentials dx1, dx2, and dx3. We have seen previously what the stress tensor components are on such a cube. Let's now blow up this cube and write out these stress components accounting for differential changes in stress. I will draw two blown up cubes because I want to show you what is happening in the front faces and in the back faces. This detail will be particularly important in the next video where we derive the moment's balance. I'm also color coding the faces to make it a little easier for you to see which is which in each cube. The terms added to each stress component on the front faces are what accounts for the changing nature of the stress along each axis. That is, sigma ij will be changing continuously. I know it looks like there is a lot, but this can actually be very digestible if you think about it for a tad bit. Please pause the video to check on the indices on each stress component. You will develop the intuition quickly after noticing how they relate. Okay, so we are considering the stress to be changing continuously. Thus, Taylor's theorem would tell us that the stress at x1 plus dx1 is sigma 1, 1, where sigma 1, 1 at xi plus dx1, comma, x2, comma, x3 is sigma 1, 1 at x1, comma, x2, comma, x3 plus delta sigma 1, 1 over delta x1 at x1, comma, x2, comma, x3, dx1. The same goes to the other components and faces. To find the x1 force balance, we need to multiply the stress component by the area of the face undergoing that stress. Along x1, this area would be dx2 times dx3. You will take the same approach to do each force balance. Along x1, we need to account for sigma 1, 1, sigma 2, 1, and sigma 3, 1, since these are all the stresses along the x1 direction. Add those stresses up and multiply by the area we decided on. Remember to also incorporate a component for the body force. This body force component is basically the density, which is mass over volume, times the body force, which in this case we can say is the gravity acting along the body. But to turn this into a force, we need to multiply the body force component by the cube volume we had mentioned earlier. Once we divide all terms by the volume, dx1, dx2, dx3, we get the final force balance along x1. Notice that this equation representing the balance of the surface and body forces equals zero. The reason being is that all forces will equal zero when there are no inertial forces. This is generally a good assumption in biomechanics. We can then do the exact same thing for the x2 force balance and get a very similar equation to the one we found in the x1 balance. Notice, now the second index is 2 on all stress components and we would label B2 instead of B1 for the body force component. Still, the balance equals 0. You will get the x3 force balance similarly. Notice how alike the three equations of force balance equilibrium are for a body. Note also that you get three equations because the forces are vectors. We can represent all of them in a very short version of equilibrium equations. Essentially, using index notation, you can represent the equilibrium equations for a continuum as this. We would then be taking the derivative with respect to the first index, the one representing the face acted on. You may also see different forms of this equilibrium equation in textbooks or lecture notes. They are all trying to tell you the same thing using different mathematical symbols or representations, essentially. The divergence here implies a summation over the first index of the tensor. The divergence of a tensor is really just a vector. So do not freak out when you see the equilibrium equations in slightly fancier forms. Remember, 
you now know how to derive them and what they mean. So the power, it's really yours. I will see you next time.